you know, you go to a herring lake in the summer, offshore brush piles, right? Fish are going to be feeding up. You're going to be throwing top water. You're going to be throwing underhead spins, and you're going to be looking for brush, correct? And that's probably going to dominate most of your summer tournaments on the lakes down here. So I'm going to spend, I'm going to do what I call 60-40 rule. I'm going to spend 60% of my time trying to win the tournament. I'm going to spend the majority of my practice finding every brush pile I can find on Hartwell. I'd on every point, finding every cane pile, trying to determine which ones have the right fish in them, going and seeing what kind of baits they are. there. Do we want a drop shot on the outside edge of the cane pile, or are we going to be throwing a, you know, a underspin through the top of it, or are they going to come up and hit a spook? Right? I'm going to do all of that homework because I know in that time of year, seven of the top ten are going to come off of that pattern. Correct? I mean, that's just, you know, you know those things going into those tournaments. You know at Gunnersville, you're going to be fishing shallow grass in February. You're going to be throwing a rattle trap or, you know, chatterbait. And you're looking for that group of fish in the grass on the main channel at Gunnersville and you're going to try to find the best group of fish that you can find. You're going to spend the majority of your time doing that. Um, Kentucky Lake, right? You got a tournament at Kentucky Lake and it's in June. What are you going to do? You're going to idle and 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 you're going to spend the majority of your practice because by God, Kevin Van Dam is going to win it offshore. I mean, he is. He's just going to beat us there. That's what he does. But so you always want to spend the majority of your time trying to develop, you know, the winning pattern. And like I said, 90% of the time, guys, you know what it is. You know, there there are very, very few instances does it ever, you fish a tournament, I fish a tournament, and I, I think Brandon... I think he'd say the same thing that all of a sudden the, the winner go, and you went, I didn't know you could catch him like that. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it doesn't happen. You go to the Potomac and the guy wins on a chatterbait in the grass on a flat out in front of a choir, you know, just whatever, you know what it's going to take. And so spend the majority of your time doing that. But now how do you be, cons the problem is, is, all the other competitors are doing the same thing, right? So if you're in a 100-boat tournament, 80 of the guys are doing the exact same thing you're doing. And seven of those are going to be in the top 10. So the chance, seven out of 80 is not a great, not great odds. So you got to figure out how, what are you going to do to differentiate yourself? You know what I mean? Because you're not always going to find the dominant pattern. And if you do, are you on the fringe of it? You know, did you find brush piles that got 12 pounds of fish in it when you really need 18 pounds on Hartwell, you know, that time of year? You know, you don't always lock in the main pattern the way you need to to perform. So going back and, and kind of thinking about my practices and what I do and, and looking at tournaments and how did I get off of the dominant pattern and succeed and still, you know, have enough you know, wait to get a check, get the check line, go home. Mama's happy. Lights are on. You know, everybody's good. We get to go to the next one. We're still in, you know, contention for the classic or red crest or whatever. You know, we're still in the game. So looking back at everything, there are four things that I do at every lake. And it's funny, I didn't know this. Like, honest to God, guys, it's just, it was, it's instinctual because you, you, you kind of, when you do it as long as we all have, you kind of go about practice the same way you always do, and you don't even think about what you're doing in a lot of cases. So there's, there's four things that I do to survive. The first one that I've probably utilized as much as the other three is I always try to find a dock bite. I don't care where you are, in the, unless you're somewhere where they don't exist. There is a dock bite somewhere. 